Hi, this is Chapter 9, Incarnations of Business, Business business in Action. In this chapter, Production Systems, it explains the system perspective and identifies seven principles of system thinking that can improve your skill as a manager. That's the first learning objective. Second one is describe the value chain and value web concepts and discuss the controversy over offshoring. Three is define supply chain management and explain its strategic importance. Four is identify the major planning decisions in production and operation management. Five is explain the unique challenges of service delivery. Six is define quality, explain the challenges of quality and product complexity, and identify four major tools and strategies for ensuring product product quality. And lastly, explain the concept of Industry 4.0 and the Smart Factory. Remember, even though we won't get through all the slides, you are responsible for all the information that's covered in these learning objectives. So here's a model from point to line to circle, the system view. So here you have the point. Oh, goodness. Here you have the point. Here you have the line, and then here you have the circular view of, of the steps. And I don't want to do that. So we'll go to the next one. And managing systems for peaks and performances helps everyone see the big picture, understand how individual systems really work and how they interact, understand the problem before you try to fix them, and understand the potential impact of solutions before you implement them. For example, right now, uh, there's a lumber shortage, and lumber has gone from about $315 back in March to almost $750 today. Uh, The reason for it is that the lumber mills were shut down for about six to eight weeks, and when they started back up, they didn't expect to have a high demand for lumber, so they didn't... uh, increase capacity and produce uh, to the maximum that they could and uh, they actually went much slower thinking that they didn't want too much inventory as a result there's a huge shortage of lumber which more than doubled the price okay so they didn't really see uh, the system in the big picture and what the demand could have been what the man actually became and so they didn't uh, manage the system for peak. Okay. Don't, don't just move problems around, solve them. So you have to figure out how to solve the problem for the lumber being in short supply because the lumber mills aren't producing enough. Understand how feedback works in the system. Use mistakes as opportunities to learn and improve. One uh, problem, or one solvent solution, excuse me, one solution to the problem with lumber mills for large home builders uh, could be to buy a lumber mill and supply all their own lumber. So you'd have vertical integration, vertical supply chain integration, uh, so that you would actually own the supplier of your lumber. Uh, Business transformation systems, they have here restaurant, automaker, retailer, and research service. If you go on a new car lot right now, you can see there's a huge problem with the automakers because they have very little inventory and because the automakers shut down and then they didn't tool up to actually build new cars to the capacity that they could have to fill the dealership lots. Uh, Now this might have been planned because they didn't think demand was going to be so great and they're just going to gear up for 2021 models instead of 2020 uh, or they could have just not planned well enough and now their capacity can't fit demand. Value chain, all the elements and processes that add value as raw materials are transformed into the final products made available to the ultimate consumer. If you don't add value in your section of the chain, supply chain, then there's no reason to have you. Outsourcing is contracting out certain business functions or operations to other companies. Uh, So like we're outsourcing ECU is outsourcing the help desk uh, when we're not open, when there's nobody on campus working, 
Uh, and that company could be anywhere as far as who the person is that's on the other end of the phone. Um, so instead of hiring people to work 24 seven at the help desk on campus, they're going to, they have outsourced it now uh, to another party so that the only time you're actually talking to somebody on campus is from eight in the morning to five in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. Value webs, multi-dimensional networks of suppliers and outsourcing partners. Uh, we already went over value chain. Down here, supply chain, set connected system that coordinates the flow of goods and materials from suppliers all the way through the final customer. Okay, supply chain management, business procedures, policies, and computer systems that integrate the various elements of the supply chain into a cohesive system so that the retailer is never out of inventory but never has too much either. So that there's a good balance so that you don't lose a sale. In other words, you don't have a customer coming in looking for something and it's not there. But you also don't have so much inventory that it gets damaged, that it spoils, uh, that it becomes outdated or something, and it costs a lot of money. So strategic impact of SCM, managing risks, relationships, trade-off, and promoting sustain sustainability. Okay, supply chain systems and methods. You have inventory, goods and materials kept in stock for production or sale. And then you have inventory control, determining the right quantities of supplies and products to have on hand, tracking where those items are. Procurement, the acquisition of the raw materials, parts, components, supplies, and finished products required to produce the goods and services. Material requirements planning is a planning system that works backwards from the company's sales forecast to make sure it has enough of everything required to build those goods and, or perform those services. In other words, an example of that would be, let's take a salon. I noticed on the way home that there was a new salon that just opened up downtown in Ada. And if you're going to open up a salon, you would have to first think about everything that you would need as far as chemicals and tools uh, to cut somebody's hair or do any service that you're providing. So if, you, if the person wants their hair colored, if the person wants a perm, if they want just a haircut, and so on and so forth. All the different things, all the different services the salon would offer, uh, you would have to list all the tools and equipment that you would need to be able to do them. Then you'd have to purchase all of those, and then you'd have to have them in stock in a large enough quantity to handle customers till you could reorder and receive those um, replenishments of those supplies in the future. So you'd have to think backwards. You'd have to think, what if my entire schedule was booked and all the, everybody wanted the same service and go over it for each of those same services. And that's what you'd have to purchase in order to make sure that you wouldn't turn somebody away saying, oh, I'm sorry, I can't give you a perm or I can't color your hair because I'm out of the necessary ingredients to do that. And then you have manufacturing requirements planning. Uh, it's a planning system that works backward. Enterprise resource backward from the company sales forecasts to make sure it has enough for required, which is basically what I just described. And then enterprise resource planning, and this is just the planning, but ERP system. It's the planning system that addresses the needs of the entire organization from manufacturing to sales to human resources. Okay, so if you interject a enterprise planning, enterprise resource planning system, then once you have all that information of of what you needed for all those different services for your salon, you would put that in the system so that whenever anybody took a bottle of something out of storage, they would scan it and then the ERP system would know if it should reorder it or not. Or once it, you took enough bottles out, then it would know to reorder it. Maybe not one bottle, but maybe you would have to use three of the six bottles that are in storage before it would reorder it. And you would 
um, program it to do that. And then management, production operations management, so we're seeing all activities involved in producing the goods and services. And that includes facility location and design, forecasting, capacity planning, scheduling, and lean systems. So this is one of the big problems uh, with restaurants right now because they plan on so many tables being full uh, for a percentage of the time of each day when they open the restaurant. Now, with social distancing, they may only have a third of those available. At, and then they can only fill a third of the restaurant. And so two thirds of the capacity that they were planning on generating revenue is sitting idle because they're, they can't put people in those tables. So that means the revenue that they were planning on getting for 100% of the tables now has to go down to a third of that. So if this lasts for much longer, the, if the restaurant wants to stay in business, they'd have to raise prices because they have to have the revenue that would have generated by 100% of the tables to have it generated by just a third of those tables. So the only way to do that is to raise prices. Um, now, if you were only open for lunch, breakfast and lunch, like there's some restaurants around that are only open for breakfast or lunch, you may then open for uh, dinner, which would then increase the availability of, of revenue because you're keeping your hours open longer. The only issue with that is if people only know you for breakfast and lunch foods, it may be difficult to get people to go there for dinner because that's not how your your brand is, is, con, is perceived because you've always been just a breakfast and lunch type of restaurant. Then lean systems means that you run uh, with the least amount of expenses possible and still keep the business going. Capacity planning, I already went over that. Critical path, we already went over that. Uh, productivity and lean systems. And then here's a Gantt chart. A Gantt chart is a chart where you lay everything out that you need and then you put it in the order that you need it and then you can see when the overlap happens. Uh, for example, if you wanted to build a patio, a concrete patio, okay, you'd have to order the concrete to come in after you've gotten the rebar and put the rebar in and you can't do that until after you dig out the entire uh, area that you want the concrete laid. Okay, so you put you dig out the area if it's all grass now or dirt and then you put in the frame so you'd have to go get the lumber to put in the frame and then once you have the frame in uh, you would then have to put in the rebar and then the concrete okay so you have to do it in that order if you have the concrete coming in here but the rebar doesn't come in until here that won't work because the rebar has to come in back here before the concrete comes. So this would be the rebar. If it's a large enough building, you may only need half the rebar in before you start doing the concrete because you, concrete may take a month to get all the concrete that you need to fill the, the floor if it's a huge building. And then so you get half the rebar in and installed and then the concrete starts coming and then while the concrete is doing the half that you already put rebar in, you get the rest of the rebar and then put that in on the other half of the um, flooring. And then by the time you've done that, then the rest of the concrete comes and pours it in. But it has to be done in the right order, otherwise it won't work and you'll be stuck with concrete you can't use. And then lastly is perk design, uh, simplified perk diagram for store openings, and that's promotions, ads, and opening day, and you have training, and then your merchandise received. So if you don't have all this done in order, then it would be a very um, poor open. Because if you're advertising to have Lysol wipes on sale on August 18th, and the Lysol wipes don't come until September, then all that money you spent on advertising is wasted. Okay, that's it for chapter nine. Have a great day.